Little Wood. At Birkenau, those selected for immediate gassing were brought to the Little Wood by Crematorium 4 to wait and be photographed by the Nazi SS. How unholy under the darkroom safe light as images of prisoners begin to appear ghost-like on photo paper, everyone gathered with family in the little wood, huddled together against fear for the elements of the coming night, desperation shows no other countenance, but faces edged with sharp expressions and sidelong glances at the photographer who captures them settling among the trees. As each image deepens in perspective, one sees children ready to entertain, stepping in front of their mothers to dance for the camera or for a closer look. How many finally emerge from the distance, blurs with overexposure in the shapes of trees. Too much light summons the spectral, too much shadow darkens the mind. Each image ruptures from one into the other, from cloud white paper into ash. Hair. During camp liberations, several tons of hair cut from the heads of prisoners were found. One girl's hair braided by careful hands and tied with a white ribbon at the small of her back, swings in rhythm as she strolls a Berlin boulevard on a spring morning. At times her braid falls forward into view, as when she studies some red flowers spilling from a black window box, their color dazzling enough to turn anyone's head. And her hair, traced by its own glow, as rich and auburn as anyone could dream, she impulsively strokes, feeling the braid down the long rope of its beauty. One flower she considers carefully, leaning forward to inspect its petals, while pulling her long braid taut with both hands. Another she daubs with its brush end, before tossing the braid over her shoulder and gliding past the brown shirts, patrolling the district that morning, one gesturing with fingers like scissors. Schindler's Grave A memorial in the Park of Heroes in Israel praises Schindler as the savior of more than 1,200 Jews. Yad Vashem named him righteous among nations. Each stone lifted from the earth by a survivor and carried in gratitude to the sarcophagus where Oscar Schindler's name lay carved under a summer sky. Each stone delivered there rests with others in his memory. As though drifting through space, time had placed them there, in odd formations along the perimeter and in small piles, for no other reason than unwinding destiny's sad ribbon over a parade of years to the very end in Israel. These stones of grief, carried by each survivor, who witnessed death at the hands of Guth or Mengele, these collapsed stars whose density and jagged shapes hold their memories, now travel a still universe, years from the past, locked in orbit around their enigmatic sun, a man who stepped from the darkness alone, fringed with the ashes to which all would succumb, had he not been touched by an awareness that settled with whispering voices around him, a reminder of a darker silence than death to befall everyone but the righteous.